On this episode of the Ask Mike Reynolds Show, we talk about the sleeper stretch and if it's a thing of the past or something we still use here at Champion. The Ask Mike Reynolds Show. Helping people feel better, move better, and perform better. Before we get to the podcast, I wanted to make sure you knew about my free online course on the introduction to performance therapy and training. If you want to learn how to get started optimizing and enhancing performance, this is the course for you. Head to MikeReynolds.com slash performance to sign up today. Hey. Welcome back everybody to the latest episode of the Ask Mike Reynolds Show. We're up at Champion PT and Performance. Lenny McCrina, Dan Pope, Mike Scaduto, Dave Tilly answering all your questions related to physical therapy, fitness, sports performance, performance therapy, any of those cool things you guys want to talk about, we're here for you. You can ask questions just like we're going to answer by going to my website, MikeReynolds.com, click on that podcast link and there's a form to fill out and we will try to get to your question as well. Lenny. Do we have any physical therapy students with us today? Yes, Michael, we do. <laughs> we have Trey Martin from East Tennessee State University. Dr. Trey. The home of the Eagles. Trey Saunders. Um, we have, <laughs> completely wrong. We have uh, Ryan Johnson. If you guys come up with a nickname for Ryan, that'd be great because it's such a vanilla name. We Van- can't. <laughs> Maybe vanilla. Vanilla Ice, vanilla, vanilla Ryan. Vanilla, vanilla Ryan. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> from Winston Salem State University in the beautiful state of North Carolina, where I used to live and work. And we also have um, Evan Jerjevic. He uh, his name is uh, synonymous to a Scrabble defeat, uh, uh, winning in Scrabble. If you use his last name to get a ton of points, seventy-five especially, points, especially <laughs> on a, a triple letter, triple, triple letter, word, yeah. yeah. Jerjevic with two J's. And uh, he's from Trine University in Indiana, the beautiful state of Indiana. And if you're a, a past episode watcher, right, we're just going to do that, and you're going to get it. Trine University. You're going to University. You're gonna know what that means. means. Trine. We're not sure why. <laughs> <laughs> but we're trying, trying Tron Star Trek. We're still doing Tron, that. Trying Tron. <laughs> Jerjevic. Do we have a question from the audience today? We do. Brady from Iowa. Is a sleeper stretch a thing of the past? If so, what other options are there to address GERD in overhead athletes? All right, so cue the red button, Lenny. So, yeah, sleeper <laughs> stretch time. Goodness. Uh, you know, it, we still get questions like this all the time, so apparently you didn't read my article, Brady. I have like Brady. six articles on that, Brady. Shots fired. Brady goes right to the form and fills out a question instead of going to the search bar. and Just type in sleeper stretch, and we'll answer all your questions. But, um, but no, I mean, it's a good question. <laughs> Jesus. Come on, Brady. Uh, but he's grateful for your reading yeah, and listening. But thanks so much for, for listening to the podcast. <laughs> but I, I, so I'm going to throw it on the students here because I think I get why people are saying this, right? People still recommend the sleeper stretch. And you're probably what? getting a script from a doc- doctor that says do the sleeper stretch, right? I got one yesterday. Yeah. I don't want to date the podcast, but if we could somehow pan the camera, which we're not, to the whiteboard. I put this on my Instagram and Twitter like recently because I literally got a script from a doctor that said, GERD, poster capsule, tight. Sleep a stretch with the three things. I'm, I'm gonna in se- a 13 year old softball player. I'm gonna send a script to a doctor <laughs> with a patient that says do a minisectomy, <laughs> and just like send it to the uh, do, send it to the doctor right. when we send them in so there. So we still but, get these, but even in, in our area. Did you, did you guys learn sleep or stretch in school? And did they say it was like a thing, like you should use it? Do they you teach know? it yeah. in school though? Is it part of the curriculum, or is this a social media thing? I was never taught it. it. We didn't get it. I, I, it. Yeah. It. No. I wasn't told it. I mean, we went over it one day in school. It was like an option to increase IR, but not really like a specific application for it. It could be that they're just presenting all the options, right? Well, like, and, yeah. and don't forget, like in the early 2000s, there were some articles about how this was like the greatest thing in the world. Sliced bread. Right. So like if you were to Google this and you were actually to like go on PubMed or something, you'd actually find articles that say it's pretty good. But, yeah. uh, but Brady, in all honesty, you got to dig in and re- read some of these, extras, uh, these articles that I have on the website. Because we we talk about some of the negatives of the sleeper stretch. So sleeper stretch is fine, I guess. Like it's 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 torquing your arm into internal rotation, but it really just assumes that you know uh, your approach to restoring the range of motion is just to torque. Where there's a lot of other options we could potentially do before we just start torquing it. And there's a lot of negatives to the sleeper stretch too, like the position of it. You could argue is an impingement-based position. You could argue, you know, the arthrokinematics of the joint are kind of awkward and, it, and it's really sore. But I think the kicker that I always kind of tell everybody with this is, 
and, and this is kind of to answer your question is the sleeper stretch dad or whatever he said is when you're doing a stretch and you and you feel this like sharp pain on the front of your shoulder and people are like oh yeah that's it that's that's the feeling I want <laughs> I always tell everybody that's the equivalent of like you flipping on your stomach and me stretching your knee and instead of feeling a nice stretch in the quad you're feeling like a sharp pain on your tibial tuberosity and you're like yeah that's it keep pushing that's what we want we would never do that with the knee right and that's kind of the same thing with the shoulder so to answer your question about baseball and stuff if you immediately just assume you do sleeper stretch with somebody that has tight internal rotation then you're missing the boat potentially on this complete population of people on whether or not they even have a loss of internal rotation or if GERD is normal so based on that I, I, let me open it up to you guys is there a population that you think sleeper stretch may be still applicable like uh, rotator cuff repair or osteoarthritic or uh, adhesive capsulitis, like a frozen shoulder. What do you guys think? Does anybody still do this? Uh, it definitely wouldn't be where I would start. <laughs> I, I, I don't think I've ever given a patient a sleeper stretch. I mean, um, with like a rotator cuff repair, it doesn't seem like a great position. <laughs> Probably the opposite. To. <laughs> definitely start with uh, like a way more gentle approach in terms of less aggressive stretching. Um, probably start with like soft tissue, passive range of motion, and, and if you're getting some capsular tightness, maybe do some low load, long duration, but maybe not in that provocative of a position like the sleeper stretch. So it seems like not. it seems like we're jumping right to like a really aggressive thing by going sleeper. Yeah. I guess one thing I learned from you guys over the course of time. Thank you very much. I mean, one thing that Lenny mentions a lot is that the posterior capsule is not necessarily a super robust structure. It's not something that's probably going to be limiting range of motion a ton. So if you assess the capsule and maybe it is really stiff, maybe you do need to address it. The other part is that what is limiting that internal rotation if that's actually occurring, right? So if we can work on some of that musculature, maybe do a cross body stretch or something that's not going to irritate the joint further, we're probably going to be more effective because, you know, the reason why I have internal rotation limitations maybe not that capsule and even if it is capsule probably not the intervention that you want to choose first right right well, let's right. think about we've talked about the capsule in the past in previous episodes and how to, we think we can potentially try to stretch it out is a prolonged stretch over uh, with a light load right so low low long duration are we gonna have somebody lie on their side for 15 minutes and do a sleeper stretch and try to get posterior capsule stretching it just the concept just doesn't make sense and like he said this is a very small population that may get like a millimeter or two thickening of the posterior capsule. It's already the thinnest portion of the capsule anyway, if you look at anterior and inferior portions of the glenohumeral capsule. So I don't think, I think we're, we're missing the boat. And we put a paper out in 2008, if we're talking baseball players, that showed immediate changes in internal rotation. You lose internal rotation from throwing. There's no way the capsule is becoming tight right after throwing, right? If we think it's muscular tenderness and, and that's probably the, the where we should be targeting our efforts is in the muscle, in the tendon, not the capsule. So I think we just, we completely missed the boat. We've gotten on this sleeper stretch thing and I'm guilty. I helped write a co-author paper with Kevin Wilk and trying to come up with a modified sleeper stretch and put him in an open pack position more so, rolling away and so you're not really lying on the shoulder joint. And you know, I, I just think we, I've gotten away from it 100%. I don't, I never, never, and I, I hate to use this term, but I never give it to anybody anymore. It's just, it's not the most effective way, in my opinion. I think this stretch, horizontal adduction, has been shown to give similar results, if not better results, right. in people that have tightness in the back of their shoulder. Posterior capsule, posterior shoulder tightness, not posterior capsular tightness. You keep calling it the capsule and we, we're giving it the wrong name, I think, from the get-go. So even if like you have a limitation in IR, then the next question always comes down to, like, <clears throat> what about a home exercise program? Because we can't do manual therapy, can't do soft tissue, that right. stuff. And I think what Lenny's getting to is just cross-body kind of horizontal deduction is probably even, even better for that. So even the people that say, well, but is sleeper stretch a good home exercise program? And I, I still think no. So we never, ever, ever use sleeper stretch here. <laughs> and, and I've never used sleeper stretch in almost my entire career. I think like the first time I like did it a few times is like this is all wrong I just like had, had this like this none of this makes sense right like like so I never really did it I, I do not have problems with maintaining internal rotation in, in my people especially baseball players so is it a thing of the past I, I think so I, I think it really is uh, we don't use it and I, I would say we get a lot of people that come here that maybe we're getting therapy elsewhere and one of the first things we do is we we tell them to stop doing that and that's one of the things that helps get them better I think in my mind is they, they keep aggravating it by doing it more and more. 
So, uh, like I said, Brady, I apologize for the beginning again, sort of, but, uh, but head to my website. There's a ton that you can read about that on the sleeper stretch. Um, and I think, I, I think you would kind of dig in a little bit on and make that decision yourself if uh, it's even the best thing to do. Even if it's an option, is there a better option, right? Does that make sense? So, good question. Appreciate it. Head to MikeReynolds.com. Click on that podcast link to ask us more questions just like that. But try to read my website first to answer the question yourself before you... Anyway, sorry, Brady. And then we'll be sure to answer them. See you on the next episode. <laughs>